Welcome back. We are now at step four of the technology action plan and we have already covered uh, three steps. The step one was how to set the ambition for the technology action plans. Then we were moved on to how to identify actions and activities for the technology action plans. And then we covered how to identify stakeholders and how to prepare a work plan for the activities. Now we are at step four and what we are trying to do is to determine the capacity building needs for the technologies and estimating costs and funding requirements. In this particular presentation, we will first look at what are the different capacity building needs for the technologies and then we will look at different types of actions and activities and this is important because different types of actions and activities have different costs and we will look into the estimation of costs for type 1 actions and activities and estimating costs for type 2 actions and activities. Now, uh, different countries have different capacity building needs. Let us start like that. Every country is unique and in that sense, different countries have different capacity building needs. But in general, we can say the capacity building needs could be in terms of identifying uh, uh, cost and human resources, estimating cost and human resources for activities or it could be in terms of financial planning for this market development, raising funding for uh, for the technology action plans like writing proposals uh, and project ideas, developing project proposals for this or in terms of uh, the technology itself like engineering, construction and design uh, for projects and there could be many more and the countries can identify these capacity building needs based on where they stand. Now coming now down to this uh, issue of uh, finding the, putting the budgets for the activities and uh, uh, looking into this issue of the funding sources, it is important that we l have this understanding that the actions and activities could be of two types. Type 1 and in the, in, the, uh, in the TAP guidebook, we have divided this into two types of action, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 actions or activities are those which are basically aiming at preparing a full program. Whereas the type 2 activities are those which are concerned with the implementation of the uh, actions and activities. Now let us look at how do we go about estimating the cost of type 1 activities. Uh, once again, uh, we would like to repeat that type 1 activities are those activities where we are talking about uh, preparing a program, a full program, not implementation of that activity. And therefore, the main cost for such uh, actions and activities is the human resources. And therefore, when we talk of human resources, we have to think about three things. One is to we have to think about the duration of activities. We need to talk about the manpower required for what those activities and what are the hourly rates because these will vary from country to country. In addition to this, we also need to keep some provision for traveling. So, we should have some budget for travel. We should also keep in mind that there would be a need for having some stakeholder consultation. So, there should be some budget for arranging meetings and there should also be a budget for engaging consultants for, for example, for some analytical work, we would like to engage some consultants. In addition to this, it is also a good practice that we think of expenses for managing this whole. So, project management expenses should, a provision should be made for that and typically around 5 percent of the budget could be allocated for project management. In addition to this, we should also be aware that many times the projects will run into certain delays or the scope of certain activities might change. So, as a result, we should also plan for contingency and it is a, uh, you can say, uh, you could as a thumb rule put 15 percent of the budget towards contingency to take care of this unforeseen. Now, coming down to this type 2 activities. Now, as I said earlier, these type 2 activities are more related to the implementation. They involve the actual implementation and they could involve implementation of programs which are aimed at products, uh, delivering products through markets, for example, solar home systems. So, in this particular case, you are saying that the cost of the technology is borne by the consumers, but uh, the government is trying to improve the incentives for the technology. But there could also be 
technologies where you are having for example large infrastructure projects like hydro projects or dikes in case of adaptation which would need public funding or in large investments. Now to at estimate the cost of these actions and activities we should first look at our barrier analysis and enabling framework reports because within this report we should be doing cost benefit analysis of different pages. If we have done that then we have a starting basis for identifying cost of these activities. However, if this has not been done then we can make use of certain financial tools we have within the project uh, this FICA model which is available on the project website which can be used. But there are also a lot of other tools like red screen, Homer which can be used for doing this kind of financial analysis. And the reason we do this kind of financial analysis is to first of all understand what is the financial viability and in case we are trying to for example push for certain technologies through the markets we are also trying to analyze what is the kind of the burden of subsidy burden of various incentives which we are trying to provide to the consumers and we also are trying to do financial modeling to understand what is the uh, kind of uh, structuring financial structuring of the project project in terms of debt and equity what could be the impact of different policies of the government for example taxation policies or changes in interest rates that could have an impact on the viability of the whole thing. And since you are looking at a particular action which has been taken in the, uh, in the tab for evaluation it and it could be possible that the stakeholders for some reason have identified an action which has no major impact on improving the financial viability of the technology then in such a case it may be desirable to go back and revisit what our original set of majors are in the barrier analysis and enabling framework report and to see whether they can improve the viability for that particular technology. Now coming down to the funding sources once we have identified what is the budget for each action we need to also look at who, who is going to fund these actions. And the funding could be coming from public and private side. In terms of public funding, we generally are talking of funding which is provided by the government budgets. But to a small extent, the funding is also coming from charitable trusts and institutions and we have foundations and uh, which are also emerging which are providing funding on that side. As far as government budgets are concerned, in case the budgets are provided by the governments within their own country, that is the national part. But if the government budgets are used for funding outside their country that becomes a part of the international uh, assistance. And this could be in the nature of bilateral assistance like uh, a developed country giving assistance to a developing country or it could be in the form of multilaterals for example World Bank, Asian Development Bank and so on or climate funds like Green Climate Fund, GEF and so on and forth. Similarly at the national level it could be coming from the budgets or it could be coming from domestic dom uh, financial institution. Now as far as the private sector funding is concerned it could be divided in terms of funding which is coming from the private investors and it, the funding which is coming from private financial institutions. Now as far as the private uh, investors are concerned it could be coming from commercial financial institutions, uh, private equity, venture capitals, infrastructure funds, institutional investors whereas the private financial institutions this involves project developers, this involves uh, corporate actors and households for example when you are talking of solar home systems that could be funding which is provided by the households themselves. So therefore we are at the end of uh, step 4 uh, and we have so far covered uh, step 1 on uh, setting the ambition, step 2 on identifying actions and activities, step 3 which was related to uh, identification of stakeholders and preparing a work plan and now step 4 which is on identifying sources of funding and giving a budget per activity. The next step would be on risks, success criteria and indicators and monitoring of the projects. Thank you very much.